Bonjour, buenos dias, magandang umaga. Welcome to my chamber of chakras and thank you for joining me on another episode of Astro Affirmation for July 17th, 2024. It's the peak of the week. Yes, Workshop Wednesday, my brothers and sisters. It's time again to think about where you came from and where you are going. Yes, get clear. Survey the map of your hero's journey and mark your territory. The messenger planet Mercury rules the day. So tune your frequency to the vibration of the planet Mercury for divine downloads. Yes, divine data downloads, inspirations to end the week with flying colors. Oh yeah. The moon is waxing, showing bigger right coming out of its shadow yes it's a waxing gibbous moon we're approaching the full moon which will be an opposite sign of cancer which is capricorn right that's gonna be july 21st okay so the moon is looking like this a half moon okay then it's gonna be a gibbous moon and then we'll have that July 21st, full moon in Capricorn. But today, the waxing gibbous moon is in the sign of Sagittarius, the spiritual warrior, right? Seeking higher truths and philosophical understanding. So all you Sagges out there, yes, you, Zach, open up and receive the oil of anointing pouring down from the core of your brain, the land of milk and honey, honey. Yes, the pituitary gland is secreting the milk and the pineal gland is secreting the honey and combining it into a sacred secretion, carrying that spiritual seed of potential. Let it flow freely down your spine and take root at the base to sprout and grow and develop into the truest of who you are so you can live up to your fullest potential. Yes. Seek God with all your heart and you will find who you truly are and where you belong in this cancer season. Sideways 69, right? Cancer season of home and family. Yes. And then the glyph of Sagittarius is an arrow pointing upward, right? Sagittarius, the heart of the scorpion, aims and hits its mark for higher consciousness. To me, Sagittarius represents the armor of God. Yes, that protects, right? Protects what is right and what is just in this material world. All, and I mean all. No distinctions, no color lines, no racial barriers. All, all have sinned and come short of God's glory. That's in Romans 3.23. But we have a friend in Jesus. We have a savior who paid the price and sacrificed. Oh yeah, that's the go-to line of the man whenever he freestyle rap. Jesus Christ, who paid the price, Ooh, yeah. once and for all. So let's sing our theme song to put an exclamation mark boop, boop, on that thanksgiving and praise for Jehovah, 
Rafa, our God who heals. Sing with me now to the beat of David's drum. Excellent singing, everybody. Yes, thank you for singing with me. I love it when you sing with me. Now let's have some coffee talk. Grab yourself a cup of whatever and let's spill some tea. Yes, I have one more of the fat chocolate chip cookies my daughter TLC aka Trinity Lauren Conley aka Church Group 94 baked for the man's birthday she put crushed fortune cookies in here because for the man's birthday she treated to Panda Express and brought home a whole bunch of entrees and side orders, you know, long life noodles for the man's birthday. So they gave us a whole bunch of fortune cookies. So she crushed those and she mixed it with a batter. So it's got like this chocolatey, crunchy taste to it. Mm. So good. And so the man took off work on Monday because it's his birthday, right? So he went back to work yesterday. And when he got home from work, he brought home more cookies. I guess they celebrated his birthday there and someone baked cookies. So he had a plate of cookies and he asked me, would you like some? I picked this one. You know what this is? Snickerdoodle. Yeah, I think it's called that because if you don't make this cookie just right, you can throw it against the wall and it ricochets back to you and everybody snickers. <laughs> yeah, I tried making it one time and it didn't flatten out like this. It just remained into this little ball and I threw it against the wall and it came back to me and hit me. Yeah, but if you make it just right, it flattens out like this and it's soft and sticky. Mmm. Mmm, perfect. I think Lori was the one who made that. Anyway, so T, I might have gotten shit in my eye. Look how red it is. Right? Yeah, I put Visine in it, but it's still red and dry. This one especially. Yeah, I'm going through a summer cold. With the weather changing into 
something tropical. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for, what you pray for. Because I was telling you the other day, I asked the son to take it easy on Frank while he worked on installing our new AC unit, right? That was a few days ago. But then after that, more clouds rolled in and the wind started to blow like a storm's about to hit with the heat. So I'm suffering from allergies and sinus congestion. Oh my gosh. Thank God though. Frank got the AC running downstairs again and now we cool like that. But guys, I've been distracted from finishing this Point Horizon top. See, I've already completed the first half, which which is, this is the back side. Oops, got it backwards. See, this is the yoke part, okay? And then this is the body. This would be the front of the shirt, right? And I started working on the back side. Look how far I've gone. This is the back side. It's going to be multicolored. But yeah. Um, after a while of doing the same stitch, I get bored and I start on a new project. Like, like these. Right? I have it. I collected this little flower. Right? You have to make a bunch of these and then connect them to make like a placemat. And these um, granny squares. <laughs> See these granny squares? Yeah. I gotta make 64 of these and connect them. And then these heart motifs. Look at these cute little hearts. Yeah. They're gonna be like hanging in in those um, granny squares. I learned that from Karen. She has a channel on YouTube. It's called Karen's Channel, and um, she called it like a secret message blanket because those hearts are like the codes that you break to find the secret message in the blanket. Anyway, watch her video on that. Um, it's called, uh, what is it called? Um, crochet Blanket with Secret Message, I think, on Karen's channel, YT Tutorial. But yeah, I also crocheted a tetrahedron look, right? Triangle based pyramid. It's a, a four-sided pyramid and all the sides are triangular, right? The fire tetrahedron, that's why I use yellow and red because, you know, when you combine those together, it's like the orange fire color, right? Yeah, because my um, paper model of a tetrahedron is getting so worn out, look. It's collapsing inward. So this will be my new one that I show whenever we do the solar plexus chakras um, platonic solid. Yes, the fire tetrahedron for the solar plexus chakras platonic solid sacred geometry, right? And then I'm gonna make the, the granny square blanket with the heart-shaped motif they attach to the squares for a secret message. Yeah, check it out. Um, Karen's channel, YT Tutorial. Yeah, my mind is scattered today. You know, being Wednesday ruled by Mercury, the intellectual planet, I've gone mental. Yes, 
I really thought it was Thursday today. I had to edit my script because I was going on and on about widening our scope for the most wide planet Jupiter, the ruling planet of Thursday. And it's like Wednesday. We ain't there yet, right? To be honest, sometimes I don't know what time of day it is. Yeah. I don't even look at the clock anymore. You know, I just base time on the rise and fall of the sun and moon. <laughs> That's how it is when you're old like me and retired. Well, yeah, I'd be timeline jumping. Yeah, asking, what year is it? <laughs> but crochet helps me get the clutter out of my mind and collect them in these hooks and needles boxes, right? Like ongoing projects like this. This is supposed to be a four-sided um, pyramid in one piece for the top. That's also from Karen's channel. And remember this um, neck warmer. Yeah, I finally finished it. Sewed in the ends. Simone was like, is that like a topless hat? No, it's a, it's a um, neck warmer. Yeah, it's got a frilly collar. So yeah, collecting them there. Because I'm Virgo like that, you know? My rising sign is Virgo. I organize my mess into nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies with melted butter. Oh, and orange marmalade. Mm, my mouth is watering. I'm just a crazy Taurus. Crazy about crochet, not mean. Mm. Oh yeah, so here we are again, halfway through the work week where we can evaluate the emotional tone we set on Monday and put it into motion yesterday. Today we go back to the drawing board and brainstorm brainstorm new ideas for an awesome finish in creating the reality we want to live out. You know what I'm saying, what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but I feel transformed into the person I was born to be. I'm like a wild butterfly, wild butterfly. You can't collect me or capture me, uh-uh. I feel so free. Yes, I'm obsessed with fulfilling my purpose in this lifetime so I won't have to come back to this school of hard knocks, you dig? Mm -hmm. But the color of the day is violet or white, okay? Kind of goes in and out, back and forth, those two colors, but I'm wearing violet today because it's the light that shines from the crown chakra, the seventh and highest spinning sphere of energy in our spine that connects us to our higher self and God. Here's my mandala for the crown chakra. Madonna and child pendant hanging from the magic circle, the empty space, that empty space where this masterpiece began, right? It screams, Mama! Oh yeah, doesn't it? Yes, R.I.P. Mama. I love this. Look at the color. That's the color of the crown chakra. Violet and white. Holiness. Yes, so, I mean, that's so right for the astrological sign of cancer, which is the season we're in right now. The mother of the zodiac wheel. Yeah.
all my mother and mother figures have all gone to be with the Lord. Yes, Mama, my mother, Ida, the man's mom, Kay, my sister in Christ, but their spirits surround me always, guiding me and protecting me. All right, P, y'all. Thank you. And I also have Emma Ranson here. Her lavender color, yes. My lilac colored unicorn to say hi. Say hi. Say hi, Emma Ranson. Hello. My name is Emma Ranson, which means immortal, undying, everlasting. Like love seems like only yesterday when we're just a child at play. Now you're all grown up inside of me. Oh, how fast those moments flee. Once we watched the lazy world go by. Now the days seem to fly. Life is sweet, but when it's gone, love goes on and on. I love that song. I used to sing that as a lullaby to all of my kids, all six of them. Oh yeah, that's part of my lullaby repertoire and it puts them straight to sleep. And now I sing it to my grandchildren. I used to sing that to Lily too. But thank you, Amaranthin, for that interesting information. Yeah. And I'm wearing my Queen Bay crown that my brother, the Nam, gave me for my birthday this year. And my violet wardrobe. Let me show you. Yes. Don't let me knock down anything now. See, this this top here was given to me by Dika Fe for one of my birthdays. Oh, years ago. Yeah. And then this is actually a shirt, right? I cut off the neck part and put it on like a, a skirt, right? And then I turned the um, long sleeves inward and now they're like pockets, right? So, yeah. Violet is the color of the crown chakra. Yeah. Let me pick up this machine needle that fell. Okay. Yes. So, open, activate, and balance the crown chakra okay yes i also have my smart scents see these you don't have to wet them or anything you don't have to immerse them in any kind of medium like oil or anything it's just dry like that and it smells so good you just put it in like a little vase right yeah it lasts for a long time I've had that for months but yeah what else should I show you that's purple yeah eye makeup <laughs> a pendant see rose quartz heart-shaped pendant necklace from aura bloom my bracelets oh and this look at this gorgeous bracelet Flash ring. See that deep violet color for the third eye and crown chakra, right? This belonged to my brother Alexis. Yeah, he passed away two years ago. And this was in his belongings, you know, in the living space that he had when he was living. And I inherited it. Look, it's like a belly dancer. Right? It's belly dancing. 
Okay, so anyway, yeah. The Sahasrara is what it's called in Sanskrit. Sahasrara means thousands of petals, okay? And those thousands of petals, <coughs> excuse me, represent consciousness expanding eternally towards completion. Yeah, it's a symbol on my chakra shawl. See? There's that empty space, the singularity, the origin of consciousness, where it all begins, just like my mandalas, the magic circle. Yeah, so the crown chakra is located about two inches above the top of the head, and it works like an antenna to tune into the energy of the soul star chakra, which is right above it. In fact, it sits right on top of the crown chakra, the soul star, okay? But the soul star is considered transpersonal. And the crown chakra is still part of our primary chakras, our um, personal chakras, right? Okay, so the soul star chakra gives us access to the Akashic records aka the book of life you know the library of collective wisdom knowledge with you know a uh, consciousness past present and future everything is recorded there okay so the soul star accesses that and the crown chakra tunes into that okay kind of brings that energy to a level that our bodies can handle Okay, so yeah, that's how the soul star and the crown chakra, they work together to bring divine inspirations, you know? Okay, but in order to open the divine door to the heavens, you must first exit the external world. And you do that simply by closing your eyes. You know, these are like the doors to your soul, right? Yeah, I used to say that in college because um, I always have eye contact with people. Yeah, because that's the windows to your soul. I used to always tell the guys that. That's why they never you know, tried anything with me because I'm always looking at their soul. <laughs> I'm like, you know, your eyes are the whiz windows to your soul. Yeah, that's untouchable. But anyway, first exit the external by closing your eyes to open the third eye chakra. And in doing that, in the darkness of closed eyes, right, the subconscious mind opens up or wake, awakens, okay, with the pineal gland, starts secreting the melatonin, that hormone that relaxes your mind and body, you know, putting your brain wave state at a lower pace so that your thoughts will just, you know, slow down and then you can get into that gap between them. Anyway, yeah, for meditation, right? Exit the external by closing your eyes and get that relaxation going with the deep breathing, right? And enter La La Land, the La La Land of dreams and visions of utopia. Ground yourself to Earth's core by plugging in your root chakra to its extension, right? See, the root chakra is our connection to Earth. And these are subpersonal chakras that extend that connection to the Earth's magnetic core. And then the crown chakra is our connection to the heavens, the sky, right? So Mama Gaia and Papa Sky, a connection to our parents. Yeah, so tap into the spirit of the land, your ancestors, and the origin of your physical being, right? Your body is made up of earth elements, but your spirit is made up of the spirit of God, right? Yeah, plug into your ancestral DNA, 
turn on the power of the central column of light in your core, right? This represents the column of light that runs up and down your spine in the core of your being. Yeah, activate the dormant coil at the base of your spine, the root chakra at the base of your spine. Wake up that sleeping snake and rise Mama Gaia's divine feminine energy. The Kundalini to ascend to the crown. To the crown chakra. Rise, Kundalini, rise. Okay. Blossom the Sahasrara's thousands of petals and expand your consciousness to receive grace at the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Hello. In the tabernacle of God in your core. Let's burn this Nagchampa incense. To prepare ourselves, to prepare our minds and hearts, to commune with God in prayer. Jai Guru Deva Om Shining One, remover of darkness, light up our space with your Shekinah glory. Deliver us from evil and fill us with the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit to overflowing for thine is the kingdom, power and glory. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's put that here. Okay, now it's time for Reading Corner. When I read from this book, The Secret Teaching of Jesus Christ by Jill L. Warner. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. Friends to know and ways to grow, a reading rainbow. I can be anything. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow, a reading rainbow, oh yeah. Somebody sent me a reel on Facebook of the opening sequence to that kids TV show, Reading Rainbow, with DMX rapping in the background, saying the N word and talking about SMB, WTF. Not funny, Esteban, you little rascal, you. Anyway, let's read, shall we? Let's pick up from where we left off. We are in the chapter of forgiveness, right? And I think we left off here. Forgiveness is surrender. To forgive, you must let go of the past and trust in the infinite compassion of God. Of course, in certain situations, it can seem difficult to forgive, and the thought naturally arises that you should simply give up or not even try. Forgiveness can be confusing, simply because it runs contrary to the nature of the mind. Your mind naturally wants to figure things out or justify your feelings. It also goes against the nature of ego or the idea, I am me or I am my body. Your ego wants to fight back simply because its primary purpose is survival of the body. Ego is the primary reason that turning the other cheek, quote unquote, is seen as weakness. 
The truth is forgiveness is transcendent of the mind and the ego and offers a living demonstration of the unlimited power of God. Of course, this can be confusing, especially when you're so upset with someone that you want to punch his lights out or slash tires, right? Peter was also unsure about forgiveness and asked Jesus, Lord, how often shall I, my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. That's from Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Knowing that forgiveness can be difficult, Jesus asks you to keep forgiving which means to keep returning your mind to its source. Not just seven times, but 70 times seven or 490 times. If you think it is difficult to forgive someone one time, <clears throat> try forgiving that person 490 times by asking you to forgive that many times Jesus illustrates that in practice, the truth of forgiveness reveals itself. When you forgive, you release yourself from pain and the past, which simply does not exist. The past no longer exists. It's in the past, but it still hurts. Anyway, the infinite love of God is always present. You only have to stop and notice but sometimes the tribulations of life just break your heart, doesn't it? Blinding you to the love that's within you and all around you. But a heart broken open can be the greatest gift you will ever receive. It is easy to think of the good things that happen in your life as a gift, but a gift can also come in the form of something that's on the surface that does not look good at all. Sometimes it is when things are at their absolute worst that the infinite light and compassion of God is revealed. This is the great gift of heartbreak. It opens your heart to the light of God. As Jesus reminds us, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. A heart broken open is ready to receive the infinite light of God. Of course, when your heart is broken, words of the Bible do not necessarily offer any lasting comfort, but the eternal transmission of the grace of God is always available in your everyday life, even when you are so heartbroken that you do not perceive this infinite grace. We'll stop there and pick up from there tomorrow because that's a lot and we need to digest that slowly and carefully. But I forgive you Esteban and whoever created that Facebook meme, but I cannot unsee that. My mind is corrupted. I can't unhear DMX rapping in the background when I sing the Reading Rainbow song. I mean, that's such a beautiful song, right? I love that song. Damn me, Stephen. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so make time to transcend the material world today by meditating and ascending to the higher realms of God. Feel good, feel God, connect to earth and starry sky and get that rainbow bridge, right? Get that rainbow bridge arcing within you and without you, surrounding you in that multi-dimensional electromagnetic field of energy to become one with everything that there is in the all in all. Yes, chant the mantras for each of the seven primary chakras. Lam, vam, ram, yam, hum, sham, om. Okay. Yes. 
and extend your light to reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can yes you can here's some bible passages to reflect on today ephesians 1 16 through 18 says i have not stopped thanking god for you i pray for you constantly asking you asking god the glorious father of our lord jesus christ to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of god i pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance oh yes i'm talking to you second corinthians 4 5 to 6 you see we don't go around preaching about ourselves we preach that jesus christ is lord and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake for god who said let there be light in the darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. All right, I end this show with the ringing of my solar plexus mini meditation bowl. Here we go. Rum. 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 Isn't that lovely? Oh, yeah. That way, we're calling us to arms, right? Protecting and serving one another for the good of all. That's all I have for you today, and once again, I honor God in you and me. Namaste.